Okay, <clears throat> so uh, that's pretty much it. Now what I want to talk about is um, I alluded to the fact that you want to pick um, eigenvectors as the dimensions of the greatest variance, uh, and uh, and you can sort of see it intuitively by multiplying by the covariance and seeing where the vectors are turning to, uh, but you can actually um, it's it's not hard to show or to prove that eigenvectors actually give you dimensions of the greatest variance. It's easy enough, so we're going to do it. Uh, so let's see how we do it. Right <clears throat> now, uh, so suppose that E is a vector, any vector, right? It doesn't have to be an eigenvector. We're going to prove that it is, but for now just assume that it's any vector. Uh, and we're going to be projecting the points onto E, right? And what we want to do is we want to measure the variance of the projections. Right? So what does it mean? Uh, here's our vector E, right? It's pointing somewhere in space. We've got x1, x2, and x3. These are our data points in the original space. Um, we said that we do the projection by doing a dot product. So we do a dot product between x1 and e, x2 and x, x3 and e, right? So for each instance, you now have a number. That's the dot product. That number tells you where the projection is along e. And that number is a scalar. It's not a vector, right? The result of a dot product is just a scalar. So uh, these are three numbers. So they could be like, you know, 0.2 and maybe 0.8 and 0.9 something like that. Uh, now, if you have just numbers, it's easy to measure variance, right? How would you measure variance? Well, the variance is you take the numbers, for each number you subtract their mean, square it up, add it up, and that is your variance, right? So that's what I'm doing here. This is the projection of xi to the e vector, right? So this whole thing is just dot product, the projection, right? So I'm going to take that projection, maybe it's 0.9, I'm going to subtract from it the mean, square it, add it up over all the instances, take the average, and that will give me the variance. Right? And what I'm going to claim for now is that that is the same thing as that, right? So uh, it's the same formula, I just dropped the mu. And that's because mu is going to be zero, the mean uh, in the projected space is going to be zero. We're going to prove it on the next slide. For now, just assume that that's the case. So this is my variance, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to make this variance as big as possible. So I want, to, I want to pick the vector e in such a way that the variance is as, as big as possible. So that's my variance. And uh, we know how to make things big or small, right? When you have a formula for something and it's nice and differentiable like this, you take the derivative, set the derivative to zero, solve, and see where you end up, right? That's going to give you the, the highest or the lowest uh, position. Um, now it turns out that in this case I can't quite do that. And the reason I can't do that is um, if I don't place any constraints on this formula, then I can maximize the variance in a very, very trivial way. So can anyone guess how I would do that? How could I make the variance a billion? If you pick an eigenvector that's very, very big. Yes, so it's not an eigenvector, right? I'm just talking about any vector e, right? I could make e as big as, as I wanted to, right? Every number in e could be a million, or it could be a billion, and then uh, I'm just multiplying some numbers by billions, squaring them, right? Uh, and I'm going to and adding them up, taking the average. So if I do something like that, I'll end up with a huge variance. And in fact, I can make it as big as I want it to be. Uh, and uh, that, of course, is not a very useful thing to do. So what you want to do is you want to put a constraint on it so that you can't cheat uh, like that. And the way to do that is to say, well, we're going to cap the length of this vector e. We're going to say that it, it has to be unit length. So the length of e has to be... One. This way, I can't I can't put arbitrarily big numbers in there, right? Uh, now, this makes uh, taking uh, this makes maximization a little bit messier. Basically, what you have to do is now you have to add a Lagrange multiplier for making sure that your solution uh, is unit length. Uh, thankfully, here it's it's pretty simple, right? So you take the length of e, subtract one what you want it to be equal to, and multiply by some unknown coefficient lambda, and lambda here is going to be our Lagrange multiplier. Right. <clears throat> okay, great. So uh, now we can take the derivative of this, set the derivative to zero, and that should give us the vector where the variance is the biggest. Okay, so let's do that. Take this, differentiate it. I'm differentiating with respect to components of E, right? So Ea 
is the value of e for attribute a, whatever that happens to be. Right? So I'm taking the derivative uh, square of the sum, that's just 2 times the sum times the derivative of the sum, and now you go inside the sum, and uh, so this is a sum for j equals 1 to d. One of them is a, so you're going to pick out one of those. So uh, this is going to cancel out, but you're going to have x, i, a coming out of the sum, because it's the derivative with respect to e, a. Question. Is that a key in the sum for the, the Brown's multiplier sum is the Yes. Uh, thank you. So this is supposed to be a J. That's a typo. Uh, they're all over the place. Uh, thanks for supporting. Um, okay, so uh, that's the derivative of the first part. And the derivative of the second part is, again, uh, easy. So the, you have a derivative of a sum. It's just the sum of the derivatives. And the only component that has a non-zero part is the EA. Right? So uh, 2 comes up at the top, and you end up with something like that. Okay, so that is the derivative, right? And we're going to have many of those. This is for just one uh, coordinate, okay? Now, um, we can take this and play around with it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change, I'm, I'm going to move this part, lambda e, to the right hand side, and I'm going to change the order of the summations, right? Uh, so this is all linear, so I can just move the sums around as I want to, and they're finite, so everything's fine. Right. So I'm going to move the, the sum over the i's inside, right? and I'm going to move the ej outside of that sum because it doesn't depend on i. So it's effectively a constant inside that sum. Now look what I end up with. Uh, so I have, in parentheses, I have the sum over i's. i's are my instances, right? so for each instance in the data set, I take the value of the eighth attribute multiplied by the value of the jth attribute added up. Now, we've actually seen this somewhere, right? Anybody remember what it is? I guess it's in the slides, so it's kind of easy. Uh, this is the definition of the covariance between attribute A and attribute J. And it's covariance because we subtracted the means, right? The means are all zero now, so we don't have to bother about them. Right, so this is just the covariance. And look at what you're doing. Um, right. So, so this is the covariance of A and J. Uh, and I don't just have one of these equations. As I said, I have one of these equations for every attribute A. So I'm going to have a, D of those equations. So let me write them out all, all at once. Right. So uh, what do they look like? You have a sum from J equals 1 to D, so the sum over the attributes. You have the covariance of the first attribute with j times the value of j in our vector e. And that has to be equal to lambda, the Lagrange multiplier, times e1, the value of the first attribute in the vector. So just look at it. It's, it, it really is straightforward. Right? So, um, and then it, it all looks identical all the way down to d. Right? The summation is the same. ej is the same. The only thing that's different is I'm taking the covariance of different attribute with the attribute j, and on the right, I'm going to have the jth component of e. Okay? So, so this is my set of equations. Um, and now, if you look at it, you'll actually see something interesting about it. Here, what am I doing? I'm summing up over the j's, summing up what? ej, so the components of vector e, and I'm, dot, I'm doing a dot product between vector e and the first row of the covariance matrix, right? Because this is the set of covariances with the first attribute. It's the first row of the matrix, and, and I'm multiplying it by the vector E. And what do I end up with? First row of the matrix times the vector E is the first component of vector E multiplied by a Lagrange multiplier, which we're dragging along because we can't get rid of it. Right? Um, <clears throat> and then you're going to have a second row, and this is the last row. So the last row of the covariance matrix times the vector E is the last component of the vector E. So you, you'll realize that what you're doing is you're taking the rows of the covariance matrix, multiplying them by a vector, and you get that vector back multiplied by some Lagrange multiplier, lambda. Uh, and of course, if you put it all together, that's what it looks like. You're taking a matrix multiplying it by a vector, and you get that vector back multiplied by some scalar. Right? So what does this mean? This means that E must be an eigenvector. Right? So what we did is we just proved 
that the di dimension of the greatest variance, so that's what we were doing here, we were trying to come up with a way to maximize the variance, and this says that the way to maximize the variance is to pick an eigenvector. It doesn't say which one, but it is to pick uh, an eigenvector. And curiously, our Lagrange multiplayer is, in fact, an eigenvalue, right? so, which is kind of cool. So calculus and linear algebra are coming together. 